she's avoiding this because she lost. Shh. Welcome back to Kids Planning. I'm Allison. This is Daniel, and this is our 135 review of Caper Europe Mastermind Edition. Yes. So this is our fancy little slip cover. Yep. Um, but this is the retail version. So our 135 review, if you're not familiar with it, is a review after our first, third, and fifth play of the game. So you'll get a well-rounded view of our perspective of learning the game, developing a strategy, and then a well-rounded view of our review of the game yep. basically at the end of it. So the game is played on this board right here. You have three different locations. You have your two draw piles over here. This is your thief draw pile. This is your gear draw pile. And this right here shows the rounds. On rounds one, three, and five, you draw this many thieves shown by the pips. And on rounds two, four, and six, you draw gear. It is a drafting game, which means that each round you are going to have that many cards. You're going to take one and play it and then pass your hand to the other player. This is an exclusively two player game. Yes. So a lot of drafting games have like multiple players. So you may or may not get the cards back that you that you have seen before. Mm -hmm. In this one, you are always going to be passing those same two hands back and forth. Up. On the first ones, you're drafting your thieves. Yes. So you're able to play those thieves down first on the locations that you want. Your second round of drafting is your gear. So yep. you're trading back and forth, looking at what your thieves you've placed and looking at the gear that maybe will help your your thieves and in the end, add you back. Um, uh, Get your points. Yes, yeah, thank That's you. <laughs> So, and you'll notice on these, all of these have icons on them. Mm -hmm. The little mask icons let you move this guy right here, which at the end of the game, you get points for controlling. I did the, not do well yeah. doing that. Um, this means every thief card you're going to get a point for. This lets you take one of the stolen goods. This gets mm -hmm. you coins. This gets you four points for each set of green, purple, and yellow cards. So you're really just building sets of cards based on the other cards that you have that right. you've played. And it's really just, there's some area control to it where you're trying to, again, move this back and forth. You get points for sets of stolen goods for like- You also get one points for set. just having those goods as well. Like that's the yes, three you get or points, the, yeah. yeah, you get points for having mm -hmm. them, you get points for sets of them. And then you also have to think about money because as you want to play gear cards, like this costs two silver, this costs three silver, mm -hmm. um, this gives you three coins. Yeah, I love this plasma cutter. Yeah. It gave you, it gave me four coins. I was like, that's nice. So I, I got that for sure when we were drafting because yeah. I knew I wanted to play a few more the higher expensive gear. So I yeah. was for sure to, to draft that. That's so, the thing though. If you're watching your draft, I didn't notice this to like the last um, round when we were looking at the gear. If you're looking at what... It would be more beneficial to have noticed this earlier in the game. If you're looking at what gear is you there. You just and what kept your eyes closed for like 10 seconds. <laughs> it, was going. Like, going. it was two seconds. No, no. It, was, it was a long time. It was bedtime. I was sitting here wondering if you were going to open it back up or just keep talking with your eyes closed. Anyway. <laughs> So it would have been more um, effective if I had noticed this during the play earlier, like in the first, second round. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking at the hands, because you're just handing them back and forth, if you notice what's missing the next round, you're like, okay, he's obviously going for this. Right. Okay, so I need to be looking at what thieves he has. I didn't really think about that till like the last round. Obviously our second and third game are going to be much yeah. better for both of I, us. I would say there is a lot of potential strategy mm -hmm. to be played in this game, I believe because I've seen how it plays and I feel like I can turn some of that knowledge into strategy. But right now, all I have is knowledge about how it plays. I think I was frustrated with the fact that it seemed like a basic gameplay, like under understanding what you're doing seems basic, but yeah. I didn't pick up on the strategy. I don't know why my head just wasn't in it. I don't think. Um, during our first gameplay. So I'm really looking forward to our second and no. third to no. come back and let you guys know that I won. <laughs> now, something interesting with the coins is if you ever need coins and there are none left in mm -hmm. the supply, you take coins from the other player yes. until you both have the same amount. So you can't hoard coins. Like it takes away the ability to, to strategically hoard coins. I just mm -hmm. thought that was a really interesting yeah. rule. It never came up. I think it might have come I up think, once. I think during the last round yeah. it did come up where you had to take one of my coins. But or it wasn't like that. it wasn't pivotal to the game mm -hmm. yet, but I can definitely see that if you're collecting coins because you want to play some high value mm -hmm. cards, that could definitely 
definitely come And something into it. you didn't mention, with the Europe edition, there are four different um, locations, locations yes. that you get to pick. We happen to pick Paris. Well, we, Paris is the one you start with. Because okay. it's the simplest one. I didn't, I just, he didn't tell me that when he was no. reading the rules. I just noticed we were in Paris. Now we, I'm the one that reads rules. Exactly. We didn't end up getting any of the Paris locations yeah. for our locations, though. <laughs> yeah, you shuffle the card, the location cards into the location deck. Right. But it does have end-game scoring. So it gave the Paris... Um, we scored an extra point for each stolen good in our hideout. The other ones, the other locations have more complex... Um, in game scoring that they add in, mm -hmm. but and then there's also I, mean, I assume yeah. I didn't read that. <laughs> and then also at the end of the game, you score like seven points, five. But there's you he score, got fourteen. Yeah. He got all of those, so he got fourteen yeah. points. He ended up winning. It was forty five to thirty five, yeah. I believe. And was you the, and yeah. you score based on who controls the location. All in all, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it seemed like a very simple, just mm -hmm. kind of laying down cards, making sets of stuff. But as we got into it, it got very strategic towards the end. Yeah. And I'm excited to play again where it can be strategic towards the beginning. Yeah, I'm excited to play again. And um, hopefully I'll really understand the concept better. Yeah. So we will see you after we've played our third game. And that's coming right now. So we just finished game three. And I think we're good. I think we're good. We'll, we'll just come back on game five. And we're just not going to talk about game three. I enjoyed game three. <laughs> she did not. Gosh. Uh, so game two... <laughs> 35 to 29. 29. So I, I got less my game two because I got 35 the first yeah. game. And then it was 29. I was like, okay, it's okay. Game three, I got this. And game three was pretty even for me. <laughs> I got 35 also. She got 15. So I got 15. 15. No, 15. It was bad. Like, but I like the game. I just, yeah. I did horrible. So the whole should have a pretty solid strategy by game three that we said like 45 seconds ago in this video <laughs> didn't really, I've, I've had a pretty even cross score. Some, cross my fingers for Maybe you. by game five. I've had a pretty even score throughout. You have. So we played, we played Rome on game two. Yes. Which, which is the pink card. And then we played Barcelona on game three. So mm -hmm. this is one of the Rome cards. Rome introduced... This little symbol right here, which was really interesting yeah. because that means that you score for what the other player has in that yes, location. Based so, on the other players. So in this case, you would score one point for all of the green cards the other player has. Mm -hmm. So that adds in the paying attention to what you have if you don't feel like you're going to win right. the location. Also, in the drafting part, kind of pigeonholing the other person where you... In this case, maybe only give their, you try to give them green cards. So they right, have to I didn't play even them. think about that. Like, don't listen to my strategy at all. Focus on his, because obviously I'm not understanding, or not, I understand the game. It's just, there's so many different ways to score points. And well, I just think I'm doing bad. <laughs> I'm a good card player, I'm a good game okay. player. <laughs> this one just, whoo. I believe in you. I oh, believe thanks. by, I, I still haven't won Hadrian's Wall. I'm this still is true. We have not had a party video on, on Hadrian's Wall. You need so. to go watch that one. That one I was rocking yeah. it. Okay. Um, so we're even now. Okay. And anyone who watches our live streams know that I very rarely win against <laughs> you on games that are broadcast to the public. So. so our first game we played Paris, which was the blue cards that you saw in our first game. The second game we played Rome, which is the pink ones, which yeah. that allowed you to score based on the other people's, um, their crew. Yeah. What they it, had. And then Barcelona. No, well, Rome Paris, had. Rome also had. Yeah. It, Rome allowed you to score. At for, the end. And it also allowed you to score and to move the caper tracker for cards in your discard pile. Yeah. That was unique. Um, so you're you're also strategically figuring out what to hold on to. And discard, you also have the opportunity to, or the ability, instead of playing a card, to discard a card and get a coin. But that adds in the strategic element of I'm going to discard this card to get a coin, but also to move the caper tracker if I don't have another card that'll do it. Yeah, I should have done that. I didn't do it because I didn't think about it. And then this game was Barcelona, which um, allowed really interesting yeah. card here where it's this eyeball with some fun little lightning. Yeah. What that means is if you have this, say I have it right here. Yeah, yeah. the eyeball is the top card the top on card. that crew. So The top one you see, which yes. is the eyeball. There you go. So like this one, yeah. I got three points here because this was my top card there. Yeah. That was three so, points out of the four points I got for that. 
The whole, so, my whole crew here. <laughs> so, so far, each city has added in some really new, unique mm -hmm. stuff. Next, we'll play London, and then we'll yeah. pick which one we yeah, like we for game number five. We haven't yeah. opened London yet, so. So, let's hope for some, some higher strategy yeah. thinking in the next couple games. So, we'll see how that goes right yep. now. See you after game five. Okay. She's avoiding this because she lost. Shh. Five times. Shh. Well, four times. Game four was a tie. Was. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. I can't win this game. <laughs> and we're back after game five. <laughs> so she can tie this game, which she did on game four. Did. Um, yeah, the game, game four, four was 33 to 33. Mm-hmm. Game five was 35 to 30. It was a good one. That was, it was a very strategic game. Yeah. I just, again, so we ended can't up, handle the strategy yeah. apparently. So we played London our last two games. The deal with London is it adds in these coins. This H, yeah, the H symbol means you take a coin and put it in your hideout. That is now out of the game. Mm -hmm. Can't be spent, but you do get points for it. Um, it also adds scoring both ways. So like this one scores one point for any colored card on either side for the person that wins this. Right. We also got something wrong yeah, on the other ones. We realized during game four, it's like, oh, wait, we yeah. have missed something on the locations. Well, apparently this darker box here, which is not on all of yeah. them, um, that is ongoing yeah, throughout the game when you play on that location. It's just an ongoing location effect. So here, yeah. if you played a dark green card, which are these, mm -hmm. it would move the caper meter token one space towards you. you yeah so really what london adds is moving coins into your hideout moving silver into your hideout and it's there permanently and it can do things for you but it's more mm -hmm. the money based strategy right and there is only 10 coins in the game so yeah. that then we didn't i don't really feel it as much in this game but i mean i had four coins in my hideout yeah. he didn't happen to have any but um, if he had had more, that's that's less coins to move around. And it around. goes to the same rule. These are out of the game, so it goes to yeah. the same rule. The remaining six would be if you need token, if you need coins and they're not take available, the you person. take from the other person until you're equal. Yeah. Something so. we haven't talked about during the first two um, reviews is time and take playing the game. Yeah, I don't this know is, who's. This is relatively know, yeah. short. I don't know who played it for the box time of 25 to 35 minutes. This took 16 minutes to play. Like we, to, to through play. scoring. Like yeah. these, I mean, it may take, it may take a score. few minutes to set up, but it's really basic. You yeah. pick the cards, you shuffle them in and you deal them out. It really yeah, isn't that big of a setup. Yeah, so I'm, it, it's a 20 minute game. Mm -hmm. And you can talk through it. So yeah. it's a great coffee game. But I, I think our fifth game was the first one, games four and five, but especially game five, I was super strategic on here's what I have. No, he hasn't been strategic through any of it. I Yes, you have. Or no. <laughs> yeah. Not not to the level that I was okay. uh, looking at how much money you had, knowing and remembering what cards I gave you and mm. thinking, I want this one back. You don't have enough money to pay for it. So there, yes, there's a chance you're going to discard it for the coin. Yeah. But most likely I'm going to get this one back. And also... I want to win this location. I'm looking at what you have. Like the last one, it was this card. This would have. You kept discarding those because I had. Yeah. I ended up having all four of right. those laundromat cards. But there was one like this one right here gets her moves the caper meter every time. Every time she plays one of those. Mm -hmm. But I knew that she didn't have. She couldn't afford. There was one more of these. It's right here. Yeah. She couldn't afford that one. Yeah. I didn't so have any money. I gave her that one. And played another one somewhere else that was going to get me points. And so it, it just, I felt, actually felt like I was fully utilizing the game. I was strategic at, I knew that I had this one in the bag. So I was going for I didn't realize until the end of the game that he had swiped and yeah. taken all the locations. Not only yeah. that, um, I had nothing yeah. for Big locations. Big old goose eggs for locations and, and for, her for thieves. thieves. But... It was still 35 to 30. Yeah. So I was only five points behind I him have, with having those two goose yeah. eggs for both of those two key points. Yeah. Something I did note, though, um, is the three locations, you tend to kind of hone in on two. 
Like, or at least me. Every single time we played. No, okay, you did. Not him. Maybe I should change that part. I just, I naturally would like, okay, I, I'm going to focus on one yeah, area. It's, but and it again, was easy for I me was, to focus on at least two. But it, I was intentional about it this yeah, time. True. This one, I diversified my strategy more than any other game. Mm -hmm. And I really felt it. I feel like I should have gotten more than 35 <laughs> points. I think maybe we did something wrong in our first game that we scored 45 right, and 45. 35 points. Yeah. But maybe not. Maybe Paris is just... We should maybe we they're just generous with their points. next just to yeah. just to play it again. But I mean, I like this game. Yeah. I like how quick it is and how strategic it mm -hmm. is for such a short game. A lot of times short kind of 20 minute games are just kind of filler games. This mm -hmm. is not filler. It this, doesn't feel filler when no, you're playing it. No, there's very so cool. much opportunity to be strategic, to really think mm -hmm. ahead, to really mess with your opponent. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it's the drafting. Not really take that. I guess there is like these burn cards yeah. feel a little and bit more like that. And also the drafting. Like if you if you pay attention to what you're giving the other player, mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity there for that. Yeah. So, I yeah. I'm I this is definitely going to stay in our collection. Yeah. Really, really, really appreciate Keymaster for sending us yeah. this copy. So thank you so much for hanging out with us as we played our first five games of Caper Europe Mastermind. This was a blast. I really appreciate you hanging out with us. Yep. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, like the video, all those all things, things help us bring you more great content like this. I hope you think it's great. We think it's pretty great. <laughs> we have a blast making it. So be sure to keep up with the channel so you can see all of our other videos like this. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.